Hi there and welcome to this video series in which I'm attempting to build my very first copper boiler. If you've seen any other videos in the series then welcome back to you and in a sense it's a welcome back to me too because following a stroke I had back in late December 2023 this is the first time I'm back in the workshop actually working on the boiler and it's now mid July 2024. I was hospitalised for a couple of weeks and I'm making a, a good recovery now so I'm going to press on with this boiler. If you remember previously, we were just machining this down to size using emery cloth to bring this two plate down to size for a good fit inside the boiler, which we'll have a look at in another video later. But uh, this is how I was going to do it. I was just going to use the emery cloth use it as parallel as I could to this face so that this would remain parallel to the boiler barrel when it went down inside the boiler barrel. So having used this tool initially to get it somewhere near I've then finished it off with the emery cloth with 60 grit and 80 grit emery paper. And I've covered the uh, slideways up on the lathe with the cloth because the copper was getting all over and it would perhaps ruin the slideways. So that's what I'm on with currently and we'll come back to that as I say in another video. But in the meantime let's just nip inside and have a look at another boiler and uh, see what sort of tolerances and, and things we might get on this face here, the silver soldering, this. To the boiler barrel. Let's just go and have a look at how, how a boiler fits together effectively. So here's the boiler that I'm wanting to have a quick look at with you. Now I know you think, well I can't see a great deal to be honest of, of benefit to you, but if I turn the boiler around we can actually see that this boiler is a sectioned boiler and it's been sawn directly down the length of the whole boiler and taken away into two pieces so on this one we can actually see the inside of the boiler that we kind of look at when we're looking at the drawing of a boiler but now we can see it in its actual construction so let's have a closer look at this boiler and uh, the fit of these pieces going through here and perhaps where the silver solder might get along the joints bearing in mind I'm working from two books one of them by Alec Farmer here Model Locomotive Boil Making this one we're talking in terms of having a gap between rivets and copper of about maybe up to five or six thousandths of an inch gap around the copper rivet within the hole or around the tube within the hole or this tube plate and on this book by Martin Evans, on model, again on model locomotive boiler making, uh, who actually designed the boiler for the home side, he describes the boiler tube plate as being a tight fit in the boiler barrel. And equally, both of these people have built many boilers, and the boilers have been very successful boilers. So obviously, there is a tolerance upon what you can actually build your boiler to. This one says a tight fit for the boiler tube etc in the barrel and this one uh, five to six thousandths of an inch gap and then if you went on the uh, if you went on YouTube you could go to uh, Blondie, Blondie Hacks website and there Quinn on the Blondie Hacks website She's building a three and a half inch gauge boiler for
for her switcher, American locomotive. And that's a very descriptive boiler build on that. And she's using uh, a two thousandth of an inch gap between the plates, etc. She's quite happy with that. She previously tried to build a boiler with one and a half thousandths of an inch gap. And perhaps she thinks that was a little too small, really. So she's now working on two thousandths of an inch gap. But that's a very good uh, video channel that you can go and have a look at. It's fantastic, really. And you can all also catch up with Nigel on Go Create Hobby Machinist uh, video channel. And that one also, Nigel there, he's built a five inch gauge boiler for his lion. So there's quite a few channels and books and things to look at. But I think I'm going to try and go with Quinn and do mine at about two thousandths of an inch gap. Because I've got to have a gap down here for the silver solder to go. I'll bring you over handheld for a moment so you can have a look, closer look around this boiler. So this here then is the item I've been working on in my workshop at the moment. The front tube plate and I'm currently trying to turn down the external of this diameter here to a nice working fit inside this boiler barrel here such that will when a silver solder i will have a nice fillet of silver solder all around that joint there and also hopefully down the full length of this flange here now on this particular one there doesn't seem to be too much silver solder down that joint as we can see so maybe this one's bearing in mind on the Martin Evans design where it should be a tight fit when this was constructed We'll have a look at the other end of the boiler and see perhaps what Blondie Axe and myself are trying to aim for. These are the crown stays, if you like. On my boiler, I'm going to be using a girder stay. But these are rivets, much like the side stays. These are also just long rivets crown says and hopefully if we can pick it out we should just be able to see a nice fillet of silver solder if it will focus for you nice fillet of silver solder right through this copper shell here along the length of that rivet following the sides of that rivet Hopefully, I I can see it without the camera and I hope it's focused for yourselves but there, there's a silver line running all the way down the side of that rivet right through this plate and that's what we're aiming for all the way along I'll try and see whether I can perhaps show you that a little bit better I'm not sure whether you can actually make it out it might just be glinting a little more now but following the sides of those rivets up there is actually a finger of silver solder running right through that metal plate and if we go to the other side We see on the lower side now of those copper rivets you can actually see a full ring running around forming a crescent along the bottom edge of that half cut rivet and that's what we're hoping to achieve all the way through that joint a ring of silver solder traveling the, of the plate joining the two together 
and these rivets have been put through from the inside that's the crown of the firebox there from the inside to the outside and the outside has had a hole drilled obviously to accept the rivet through and that hole has then been countersunk on the outside such that when the rivet comes through there's actually a countersink for the silver solder to flow into thereby creating a nice joint on the outside and if you can see down there you can see the silver solder having flowed right through the copper plate and it's shining it's shining there on that rivet right down in the bottom see if i can get it for you you can see the ring on this on this rivet here we can see the ring there and on the lower rivet again we can see the silver solder ring where it's flowed through the plate because it would have been applied from the outside into the countersunk hole and it's gone right through the thickness of this copper plate and it's showing on the inside of the boiler now as a fillet and that proves a good joint so that's what we're aiming for these again are the rivet heads on the inside of the side wall of the firebox because we're looking at it like that at the moment so these are the heads of the rivets on the inside of the firebox and on the outside of the firebox if I turn the firebox over in a moment we can now see the outside of the boiler and the, uh, the extent of the silver solder as it's flowed around the countersink holes on the outside of the boiler shell So there's a nice fillet of silver solder all the way around that rivet going through to the inside of this steel of this copper plate and that's what we're aiming for and these rivets should just be able to fairly just freely drop into the holes as we'll see as we go along with the build but that's what we're looking for a nice fillet of silver solder all around the joints like that one there as I say this is actually a traction engine boiler I believe but it's an item that we use at our club to show people the building of and what's involved with actually firing one of these boilers how they're constructed etc so it's a very worthwhile thing having at the club we just thought you might like to see that and then we know what we're actually looking at but again as i say there's obviously a tolerance between the spaces for the silver solder to flow because different engineers and things who produce many good operational boilers have a little bit of a different take on it so there is a tolerance obviously but the gap mustn't be too big otherwise the silver solder won't adhere to both sides of the joint it, it will just disappear through a big hollow and that's what we're aiming for so I'm trying to go along with Quinn I think it, about at about two thou gap for the major joints and the tubes and the rivets will just on their own weight kind of fall through the holes that were drilling the plates so let's see how we go anyway <laughs> 